Caddis Maxwell here. This time with a review of an older Makita 6510. I believe this is it. <clears throat> 6510 LVR. This is Makita's version of a, one of their cheaper models. I think they had a more powerful model than this. But known as a 3 8 inch corded carpenter's drill. As we can see, the cord's actually in pretty good condition. But a lot of Makita's older tools, for some reason... Um, and it happens on a lot of power tools where the rubber strain relief actually ends up cracking and breaking apart. It's really specific depending on the compounds of the strain relief and how much that relief has actually been strained. Some tools they break apart, some don't. So I'll end up replacing that because the cord's just fine. Definitely know it's a classic Makita. They did, this was in the era when they tried doing the rubber boot over the trigger where they had the reverse switch on the bottom. Makita, how they you differentiate the specific parts or how old the tools is Makita actually dates them year and month. And this is from 1989, so it is a 34-year-old drill, but it does work fine. I'll show that in a second. Makita and Bosch are really the two manufacturers who had tools that were common in North America, uh, where they use their own, you know, I call them metric keyed chucks. These are uh, they're just notorious because they don't take chuck keys that are standard that are w w what we call Jacobs compatible and so it's always annoying if you lose a chuck key for like one of these Makitas or a lot of the Bosch's you just have a devil of a time trying to find the right chuck key as we can see on this one luckily it came with a chuck key but it's really kind of strange because it's a really bull really small spindle but with like a really large diameter no Jacobs key is compatible with this and so it's something to watch out for. Other than that, it's not a bad drill. A lot of these Makita drills were only partially rolling bearings. They'd have ball bearings on both ends of the motor and a ball bearing on the front, but then they would have sleeve bearings for the reduction gears and at the back of the spindle. It's not a big deal, but it was, you know, when they were competing in the professional heavy duty market uh, against Milwaukee, Porter Cable, DeWalt, that kind of stuff, Black & Decker, professional, industrial, back in the era when this was made uh it was just a little bit annoying and part of why it was annoying is makita had this thing where they were just determined to use poly fiberglass reinforced polycarbonate bodies and that's what this drill is it's a really heavy duty body but it's almost it's on polycarbonate's a lot more expensive than nylon and really it's just proven that a good grade of nylon reinforced with fiberglass gf30 is Usually you know that as PA6 GF30 uh, is more than good enough. So Makita would, you know, skimp on a couple rolling bearings, which isn't so much, again, such a big deal. But it does kind of adds a little bit more friction in, in heat under high loads. Sleeve bearings are great in many situations, but they're not the greatest under high axial loads. That's where rolling bearings really make a big difference. The other thing is, so what makes this a carpenter's drill is that they tend to be a, between 1,000 and 1,200 RPM. So they're not high speed like 2,000 or 2,500 RPM. And they're not low speed like uh, half inch drills, which tend to be, be around 850 RPM all the way down to 450 RPM. And so they're general purpose. They offer you enough speed so you have good productivity, but also offering a decent amount of gear reduction so you have plenty of power so you can run smaller hole saws and even larger spade bits up to one and a quarter inch. You can get away with one and a half inch spade bits, smaller augers, that type of stuff. Just a, uh, good for driving you know, large screws and that type of stuff. Back in the era, before cordless tools were so good, um, this is the mid rpm 3h drills were really just a go-to because they offered a nice once again nice balance of speed and power but mikita was just having a hard time kind of really i mean this is a nice japanese made drill i'll give them that but what we can see here well, i'll zoom in a little bit you can see that's just a three amp motor which is you know it's decent because mikita's motors tend to spin faster than some of the competitors and you'll hear that they spin really fast which means that they're able to have a greater gear reduction and maybe deliver just a little bit more torque per watt than maybe some of their competitors but i that would take you'd have to hook this up to a you know a special torque meter and measure the amount of power that's drawing to really 
make that determination, but that's why I suspect it seems to be pretty good, 1050 RPM, but nonetheless, 3 amps is a bit light, especially when you're comparing to the competition, and this drill isn't, you know, I'm sure it was plenty expensive, but the thing is, is they were competing against things like the Milwaukee 022, the, excuse me, the 221 and the 222. This is a 222, the difference between the 221 and the 222 is the 222 had a heavier duty chuck. But they were trying to compete against specifically this Milwaukee, which are real famous as 3 8 Carpenter's Drill, 3.5 amps at 1,000 RPM. And then other companies like Porter Cable, this is the Porter Cable 2620. This they boosted the RPM to 1200, but it also has a 4.5 amp motor. And so it, Porter this Porter Cable is a pretty stout carpenter's drill. And by the way, this Porter Cable, the Milwaukee, they're all 100% ball and needle bearings. As is this DeWalt, this uh, DW222. They had a better DW221, which had a metal gearbox. But this DeWalt was one of the more powerful ones. This is a 1200 RPM carpenter's drill, but it was upgraded. It had a half inch spindle with a 3H truck on it just to make it a little heavier duty. And once again, 6.7 amps at 1200 RPM. This is when DeWalt just said, we're going to make a really stout 3 8 carpenter's drill that's going to be like the end all of carpenter's drills and a quick side note if you ever see these DeWalt's all newer DeWalt's that have like the multiple holes for the back vent are all either Chinese or Mexican the Mexican drills are just fine but when they have these slots here you know that it's one of the older American made ones when they went to the holes is when they went to overseas just a little side note. So anyway, I don't know why I'm talking so long. I'll do a little demonstration here. But this Makita, as far as I, how it stacked up to the DeWalt's and the Milwaukee's and the Porter Cables, it was a run to the bunch. That's for sure. So I could be surprised on this one. There may be all ball and needle bearings, but I'm suspecting that I'm going to find three ball bearings and three sleeve bearings. Give it a quick run here and then... I'm going to fix the strain relief. I think I'll do the teardown first and then do the demonstration. But the variable speed works fine. Even for a little 3 amp motor, you can hear it. Sounds like it's spinning mighty fast. very well maybe above 10,000 RPM. I don't know how easy it's going to be. Yes, you can see there. The color of the fan is different. The color of the fan is actually a sky blue where it's a teal green for the body of the tool. And I always thought that was interesting on some of these older Makita tools why they had blue fans. So he's definitely been in here at least once in the last 34 years. The screws are a little banged up. This is one of the old school ones where they do use nuts and machine screws, which is always nice to see. That's a, just a more reliable way of doing it. Well, it looks like somebody was in here to replace the power cord. Unfortunately, they lost one of the screws for the cord pinch, which is unfortunate. Kind of care, definitely careless service. So the cord was actually barely being held in here. Actually, this was a very poorly serviced tool. Another thing we can note is that there's like way too much extra wire here. And then they used a, for no reason, they used a butt connector here. I guess they didn't realize that you have to tin these wires. So I'm probably going to end up having to actually cut these off and redo this cord situation, tin the wires so they'll sit in these spring-loaded terminals. It is a CNH uh, trigger switch. I don't know what the amperage rating on this one is. It is a 6 amp rated trigger so that is actually a nice heavy-duty trigger well well overrated for the 3 amp motor. 
and then this is the actual variable speed circuit six out of the bottom of the switch just so it has a little bit of extra cooling brushes are pretty easy to replace although they are pretty short I just checked one and it looks to be just fine we can take a look at the the boot on this trigger switch is just completely I mean it's all torn so I'm gonna end up just getting rid of that and it'll have to be a uh, bootless situation here we'll say that I do like that my light doesn't shine properly but they have all these little slots all these nice little guides for all the wires going up to the motor you have to have all these wires because there's um, because of it, that it's a reversible drill basically it's a little confusing why there's actually six because usually there's just four wires two for one uh, I mean on non reversible drills it's just two wires because it just goes in through one field and the field just directly connects to the brushes since this is reversible we have two wires one for each brush and it appears to be four wires for the fields two wires for each side of the field nonetheless I like the way they have them routed quick tip it's always annoying trying to get these wires out of these things because of the spring loaded you gotta get a pick and get it in just just right in order to get the wire to release over the years I've had power tools that just weren't any good so when I take them apart I keep strain release and then you end up in these situations this one uh, doesn't appear to be rubber it appears to be some kind of silicone or something else PVC who knows what I do know is it happens to be just the right size to fit in there got it back together one thing I have noticed on these old Makita tools is this happening a lot cracking just because the polycarbonate even though it's fiberglass reinforced it's a hard tough plastic but it's also brittle and really prone to cracking much more prone than nylon which just has a little bit more resiliency and that's kind of the deal with these polycarbonate body tools is they can be really tough but they'll fall not one certain way and then they will crack badly interestingly this crack is only in the front part even though the screw is actually fairly long that goes in there and actually it's just in this diaphragm portion so it just must have been strain or something like that which caused it anyway we are going to re-grease this gearbox here pull it apart and as with many of these other Makita drills we can see it is just a ball bearing on the front to take thrust loads when you're drilling hard and to tighten up the chuck but on the back of the chuck sleeve bearing sleeve bearing on the uh, both sides of the idler gear here which is always just disappointing they could have gone needle bearings all those other drills I showed you are all just a hundred percent ball needle bearing so you know Makita should have just went with a nylon body which would have been slightly cheaper than the polycarbonate and arguably more durable and then they could have just had a, just a little bit better power delivery sleeve bearings are fine but when you have high axial loads they do are have more friction that's why rolling bearings exist that being said as we can see it's all helical cut on both stages which is an expensive process so they just had some interesting choices we can see here we have a what appears to be a seven tooth motor arbor taking a nice close look at it not much wear and that's something we would expect with the you know Makita nice Japanese tools that have really high quality steel with absolutely high quality heat treatment for long running and actually it's a pretty wide so quite a bit of surface area for engagement did want to mention here was we'll see a steel washer in front of that sleeve bearing there that's because this motor on normal operation that's a double reduction so the motor will turn the same direction as the spindle clockwise so as this motor is turning what it's trying to do I'm trying to illustrate this but since the thread angles this way as it's pushing what it's trying to do is end up because of their helical cut gears there's a slight sliding force it actually because of that it is pushing on the gear so under normal operation 
there's a slight thrust load on this idler gear because as the motor's turning it's actually trying to push it forward and that's what that washer is is just to take those thrust loads things like the dewalt interestingly enough use radial needle bearings to deal with those thrust loads what milwaukee will do is they'll use a needle bearing on this side and a ball bearing on the front side the ball bearing both being able to take axial and thrust loads simultaneously i'll put a little bit of extra lube in this and then give it a run Put a little bit of grease in there. You can put a touch of grease down in the bores, but just a little bit. If you fill up the bores where there's the sleeve bearings, then you'll have a hard time assembling it because it'll have, you'll trying to push the gears in, and <laughs> there's almost no space for the grease to get out in the tolerance between the bearing and the uh, journal. Should mention that Matita on a lot of their drills they don't have alignment pegs. And some of the newer ones don't, and it kind of seems hit, it, it just no rhyme or reason. It's important. On this one, they actually do. It's not steel, but they do have this little boss here, which fits into a recess. The reason it's important is, especially on sleeve bearings, is because the sleeve bearings, you really need to have that straight. If it's cantered off one side or the other, then it'll put concentrated pressure on the sleeve bearings it also does the same thing on the gears if the gears aren't properly aligned if there's just slightly canter then it causes a lot of pressure at one point and the gears can wear out 10 times faster just because that one pressure point starts wearing the teeth out hard and then that sharp little point moves all the way across rather than being evenly distributed so at least on this older one they did do add that little boss so that when you reassemble it it is tight. Really tight. And sometimes you gotta turn it a little bit just to help work the grease out of those bores. I'm actually fighting against a little too much grease in one of those bores. So the easiest way is to actually turn them if the gears are rotating then the extra grease can get past a little bit easier so as I do that it gets closer and closer anyway that little boss which explains why this was cracked is probably because of a high torque situation that little boss put a little bit too much stress there for giggles I'm gonna to try to one inch auger but I doubt it'll do it uh, only things like that the porter cable and that big DeWalt really can run. There's a lot of friction. It takes a lot of power, but maybe uh, the Makita may do it. We'll see here. No, can't run a one inch ship's auger with this. Just for comparison's sake, we'll see if the Milwaukee 0222 will do it. On paper, very little extra power. Only 3.5 amps versus three. And this is a thousand RPM versus a thousand fifty, but we'll see here. Jesus. There's a reason Milwaukee drills have their reputation. On paper, very little extra power, uh, but it actually drove that bit right on through there. Actually, a torquey little 3 8 drill. So, as far as the competition was concerned, I mean, the Makita was the runty drill. And I can see why these are just so uncommon, because it's hard to I had a hard time competing with the, all those other manufacturers. I mean, those, there's a reason why there's so much respect for Porter Cable and Milwaukee, and even DeWalt and stuff, is because actually gave you good power in the era for their quarter drills one and eighth inch spade bit with the special cutout this is more up the alley for this Makita Come on. Oh, Makita, really? You gonna jam up on me again?
right at the breakthrough, but nonetheless, <clears throat> it stalled out at the very end there on a one and eighth inch spade bit. It's not really that big. So anyway, well, that's my little video about this Makita 6510. Um, I mean, it's advertised as a 10 millimeter drill, which is technically just a bit larger than three eighths. It's a nice carpenter's drill. It's just uh, just a bit underpowered. And that's all there really is to it. Mikita sh really should have gone with something like a 4 amp motor just to have, give it more performance. Because it's a real shame that the only things that this outperforms is just like the back and Black & Decker home utility, like those old orange and colored drills and that type of stuff. But as far as how it stacks up against all the other professional brands, uh, it just has a hard time competing. I mean, it's nicely built. They should have used needle bearings instead of sleeve bearings. That would have helped a little bit with power delivery. And once again, they should have given it a more powerful motor. But this is something that would have disappointed people. You know, somebody who needs to run one and a half inch paddle bit or a one inch auger, which is actually not unreasonable for a three inch drill. It's not that big of a bit. You're not running like a two and nine sixteen self feed bit. You're not trying to do that with a three inch drill. But not being able to run a one inch auger. The only thing I can really think of is they kind of tuned the torque so that uh, you weren't risking, you know, a lot uh, severe wrist twisting. Even that Milwaukee, uh, if you're holding it loosely, not really paying attention, it can twist your wrist. This is going to have a real hard time. If you're holding this reasonably firmly, it's going to stall out before it really pulls itself from your hand or wrist injury. And that's about the best thing I can think of is they tuned it with just enough power to be right at the limits where they consider quote-unquote safety threshold. Anyway, see you next time.